moments before the Tuffle deity appears. Yamoshi, the first Saiyan to achieve the power of a divinity after thousands of years, finally ended up returning to life, and his return shook the entire seventh universe that did not expect the return of the first Super Saiyan God. Yamoshi, even though he was a Saiyan and a true legend for his race, he had no empathy for them because in his eyes, the Saiyans were just shadows of the real Saiyans who lived in his time. And because of that, Yamoshi decided to go after each one of them to face them and thus test the power level of the Saiyans. And if they were approved, they could live to become stronger in the future and give Yamoshi an even better fight. Yamoshi using his strength was capable of great feats such as facing Goku and Vegeta together. And even though the two used their powers to the maximum, the two Saiyans did not even manage to make Yamoshi use his full power, which demonstrated a great difference between the power of the god Super Saiyan of the past and Saiyans who possessed the power of a deity. Yamoshi proved to be a very big threat to all beings in the seventh universe, and even Beerus felt that he could be defeated by the legend of the past who was now back to life. And this proved to be very true when Yamoshi ended up facing Broly in his power. Total and as if it wasn't enough, Goku and Vegeta ended up entering that battle where they both ended up losing again. But seeing that they weren't strong enough, Goku and Vegeta did the fusion dance becoming Gogeta. Gogeta in his full power and Broly faced Yamoshi. But even the strongest Saiyans in the seventh universe were not able to face and defeat Yamoshi, showing everyone that his power was far above standards. Yamoshi could very well end the lives of those three Saiyans, but he didn't do that because he liked them and knew that the three Saiyans would get stronger and that made Yamoshi leave them alive. Because if it weren't for that, Goku, Vegeta and Broly would have been killed. Yamoshi saw that everyone was after him and that the Saiyans from the seventh universe were not that strong. Yamoshi went to the sixth universe to be able to go after the Saiyans from that universe. And with that, he ended up facing the strongest Saiyans from the sixth universe, who in this case, they were Kalifla, Kale, and Kaba. During the battle between Yamoshi, Kalifla, and Kale, the two Saiyans ended up using the Putara earrings to merge, becoming Kefla. But even with the fusion powers, Kefla was not strong enough to face Yamoshi, and Yamoshi had no mercy on her, different from Goku, Vegeta, and Broly. And with that, Kefla ended up losing her life at the hands of Yamoshi, causing Kalifla and Kale to die in the process. Kaba, who was seeing all that, went into a state of fury and then awakened the power of Super Saiyan God, which made Yamoshi excited to see the awakening of Kaba's divine powers, which could be even greater than the divine energies of Goku and Vegeta. But even using his full power, Kaba was unable to defeat Yamoshi and ended up being defeated and killed by one of Yamoshi's attacks. Luckily for Kaba Vados, the angel from the sixth universe saved him from death, removing him from that local. Yamoshi was an honorable warrior, and that's why he decided not to destroy all the Saiyans who were on the planet Sadala. Yamoshi made this promise to Kaba that if they faced each other out of honor, Yamoshi would not eliminate all the Saiyans who were in the 6th universe. These Saiyans were very weak in Yamoshi's point of view, and as such were not a threat to him. Guys, before continuing this epic story, leave your like and of course if you want to help the channel even more, be a member of the channel and help the channel financially, and of course subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any news. Once that's done, let's continue the story. Moment somewhere in the 6th universe. On a planet located on the edges of the 6th universe and the 7th universe, it was possible to see Yamoshi, who was in his older form sitting on a fallen tree. Yamoshi was looking at the horizon and he was strangely sweaty. Yamoshi said, I didn't think I would have to fight so seriously against that boy called Kaba. No, I shouldn't call him a boy. He is a warrior who fought protecting his people and provided me with a very entertaining battle, something I needed. And it was even surprising that I decided to use that attack of mine myself. It had been a while since I used a large-scale attack like that, but I admit that I enjoyed doing it after all, a true warrior like Kaba deserved to receive an attack like that. Yamoshi spoke to himself as he remembered his battle against Kaba and was excited and satisfied when he remembered the feeling of fighting for real again after so many years. Yamoshi said, This is very strange. Since the moment I used the eyes of extinction, I felt a little different. It's like something was inside me and wanted to break free or something similar to that. Besides, I'm also sweating a lot and I feel my energy slowly running out, but the temperature on this planet isn't very high compared to others and I'm not even using my Kai because I'm hiding from the angels and the gods of destruction who must be behind me right now. I just hope I'm not found while I'm in this state or else I would be easily defeated by them. If that happened, it would be a bad way to go to the world of the dead. If I'm going to die, let it be fighting with everything I have. 
said Yamoshi as he was a little irritated because he was slowly getting weaker and Yamoshi at least knew the reason for that. Yamoshi said, I think it's better to try to use my divine energy little by little to cure my discomfort, but use little energy so that no one can track me, otherwise I will have a lot of problems and even if it takes a while it will be better than being tracked and me having to fight in this state I'm in said Yamoshi who got up and went to a flatter area in the middle of a forest and when he got there Yamoshi sat down on the ground and began to concentrate his energy on his body to heal himself from that state he was in. Hours passed from the moment Yamoshi started to heal from that bad feeling and after all this time he finally managed to heal himself and with that Yamoshi got up and looked around and saw that there were some natives in a corner staring at him and among these natives there was one in question that was quite large and started to approach Yamoshi which made him sigh as he was now tired from having used his energy for so long in a row. Yamoshi said, just because I'm weaker and a little tired doesn't mean I'll be defeated by a weak worm like you, so come upstairs so I can eliminate you, because honestly you are not Saiyans, and as such I do not wish to face you, you failures. Yamoshi said, irritated at being tired and a little weaker than normal, the native when approaching Yamoshi tried to hit him with a hammer punch with both hands together, but using only one of his fingers, the legendary Saiyan held back the native blow and with the tip of one of his fingers Yamoshi fired an attack key that eliminated that native seeing the strongest falling dead at Yamoshi's feet the other natives began to run for their lives but Yamoshi eliminated each one of them using his key attack simply because he wanted to take out some of his frustration on other people Yamoshi said smashing insects is always fun and even relaxing sometimes but I don't feel like destroying the rest of the civilization on this planet for now at least said Yamoshi with a short smile mysterious voice said it's seems that you haven't changed anything in the last few years and even though you have been sealed for so long you haven't changed anything that is if you are not worse than in the past spoke a mysterious voice that strangely made Yamoshi feel uncomfortable and look around in search of the owner of that voice Yamoshi said who are you and where are you Yamoshi asked already on guard ready for a possible fight with the owner of that mysterious voice mysterious voice spoke how long has it been Yamoshi don't tell me you forgot your old friend asked the mysterious voice Yamoshi Yamoshi looked down and saw a being made of some purple metallic material with a big evil smile on his face and even though he didn't recognize him Yamoshi's instincts kept him on guard because he knew that such a being was dangerous currently in the sixth universe more precisely on a planet located on the margins of the sixth universe it was possible to see that in the forest Yamoshi faced a gelatinous being that had a body that resembled some molten material like iron but of a different color the being it was exuding a very dark and evil aura similar to Yamoshi's aura. Yamoshi looked at that gelatinous being with a certain fear, he didn't know why, but that being made Yamoshi uneasy and that was strange for someone like Yamoshi and that left him intrigued and with a certain suspicion about that gelatinous being in front of him. Yamoshi said, I have no idea who you are or what you are but from your words you must know me and since I don't know you, I would say that you must already know what I was in the past and apparently you must be pretty old to know me. Said Yamoshi, keeping his distance from that being who appeared to have bad intentions towards him, something that Yamoshi did not believe this being would have the courage to do. Gelatinous being spoke, can you really not remember me? I'm even sad that you don't remember one of your best friends from the past, a past where we were both strong, where we were feared and at the same time respected by many because of our strength and our powers. Spoke the gelatinous being as he gradually approached the Seiyan who remained still trying to understand or remember what that being was saying. Yamoshi said, I admit that my memory has been a little messed up since the day I released myself from my ceiling, but I'm sure I've never seen or met any being similar to you. But don't feel bad, I usually don't remember the names of the insects that I have come across or eliminated in the past or present. Said Yamoshi in an arrogant tone towards the gelatinous being that scowled at him when he was called an insect. Gelatinous being said, the only insects that exist in the universe are the Saiyans who are now practically extinct, at least in the seventh universe. The gelatinous being spoke to Yamoshi who was irritated because of the words of that being that in Yamoshi's eyes was insignificant and even though his instincts told him he was dangerous, the Saiyan was no longer believing them because he didn't understand how a being whose appearance appeared to be so weak it would be a threat to Yamoshi. Yamoshi said, for a being as insignificant as you to say that, my species must be in really bad shape, but even so, we are still superior to an insect like you, said Yamoshi in an arrogant tone followed by a laugh. Which 
which made the gelatinous being smile when he saw that he was being underestimated by the Seiyen. Being gelatinous thought, you're still the same as always Yamoshi and that's exactly what I wanted. Be even more arrogant and let your guard down because when you do, you will remember who I am and that you should have followed your warrior instincts. The gelatinous being thought while a big evil smile remained on his face. Yamoshi said, I was curious about why you seem so familiar and why I haven't destroyed you until now but I think it was all in my head and you are useless to me. So go meet your maker, said Yamoshi before firing some key spheres at that gelatinous being whose body was exploded by Yamoshi's energy attacks who smiled when he saw the body of that being spread across the place. Yamoshi said, it's a shame, I thought that, because he knew me he would at least be able to withstand one of my attacks, but he couldn't even handle that. I was also expecting too much from a gelatinous being like him, but I'm still curious why I felt so strange in the presence of this being. Maybe I met him in the past or a member of his race who was strong and my instincts must have alerted me. But this time, they made a big mistake, said Yamoshi, disappointed with the weakness of that being that ended up leaving him on his guard, something that irritated him. After all that being was nothing compared to him. Yamoshi thought, now that I noticed I'm not feeling worse than before. Now my body is completing normal but I feel something inside me telling me that something important that was inside my body is no longer there and this could be dangerous for me. No, that must be in my head, that's it. Yamoshi thought to himself. And with that, he just sighed because he could be imagining something. Yamoshi convinced that he had destroyed that being since he no longer felt the being's key. Yamoshi turned and started walking while thinking about why his instincts were acting that way. After some time, all the fragments of that gelatinous being that were scattered around the place began to go towards Yamoshi. And when the Seiyan felt a bad sensation, he turned around and the fragments of that being came together into one and stuck to Yamoshi's face. When Yamoshi felt that gelatinous thing on his face, he started to choke, even more so when that thing started to enter his mouth, but Yamoshi wasn't going to let that happen so easily. Yamoshi concentrated his energy in his body and raised it, making that gelatinous thing begin to come away from the Seiyan and to finish, Yamoshi concentrated his energy in his mouth and spat it out, destroying the gelatinous being that was in his mouth. And the rest of that gelatinous being ended up falling to the ground a few meters away from Yamoshi. Yamoshi said, what shit was that? I thought I destroyed you, you damn jelly, but it it looks like you managed to trick me you bastard, said Yamoshi irritated as he wiped his mouth and threw some fragments that were on his face onto the floor that went towards that jelly. Being gelatinous said, as always you are very arrogant Yamoshi, so much so that you judge me using my appearance and the amount of ki that was in my body as the basis of my power. Forgetting that hiding ki and pretending to be weak is something very simple and easy for many beings, and for me it is something very simple to pretend to be an arrogant and proud gelatinous being to make you lower your guard and as I planned you did it so thank you very much for being arrogant Mr. Yamoshi said the gelatinous being while looking at Yamoshi. Yamoshi said I didn't destroy you at that time but I'm going to do it now Yamoshi said pointing his hand in the direction of the gelatinous being but suddenly the energy that was inside that gelatinous being began to increase suddenly and this made Yamoshi suddenly move away because of his say yen instincts and his great experience in combat. Yamoshi thought what why is his power Power increasing like that all of a sudden and why did I instinctively retreat this guy is not what he seems he must be an individual with the ability to alter his own appearance or shape and he used this to trick me and make me lower my expectations this is what happens when we don't trust our instincts Yamoshi thought irritated for not having listened to his own instincts which were always right but unfortunately for the Seiyan he ignored his instincts the gelatinous being after raising its energy began to undergo a kind of transformation. His previously purple body turned white and little by little he grew until he was the size of Yamoshi and his gelatinous form ended up transforming into a solid form with a now humanoid appearance and Yamoshi could see that that being was now very similar to him when he was younger. Yamoshi, looking at that being, ended up remembering someone he had a kind of deadly rivalry with in the past and this made Yamoshi's eyes widen. Mysterious being spoke, have you finally remembered who I am, my old friend Yamoshi? The being asked while looking at Yamoshi with a smile on her face. Yamoshi said, I never thought I would see you again before, but apparently it really is you. You have the same aura, the same appearance and the same damn smile on your face. The supreme god of Tuffle's King Daima. Yamoshi said now in a serious manner towards Tuffle who smiled when he saw that Yamoshi remembered him. King Daima spoke. It's good to be back Yamoshi. King Daima said with a big evil smile on his face. 
in the 6th universe. Currently in the 6th universe, more precisely on a planet located on the margins of the 6th universe, it was possible to see Yamoshi, the first Super Saiyan god and a legend for his race, face to face with an old enemy and rival King Daima, the supreme god of Tuffles, a race that in the past was the Saiyan's number one rival thanks to their special abilities. Yamoshi and King Daima were facing each other. King Daima, who was releasing a large amount of energy, ended up stopping and suppressing his energy, as he knew that if he continued to do that, he would attract the attention of the divine beings of the sixth universe, and King Daima did not want to enter in a fight against divine beings at the moment, and neither does Yamoshi. King Daima said, Thank you very much for remembering me, Yamoshi. I was getting worried thinking that I was just another one of your enemies that you didn't remember facing in the past, but now I'm happy that you remembered me. King Daima said while looking at Yamoshi who had a serious expression on his face. Yamoshi was ready for a fight against Tuffle if he tried to go after Yamoshi. Yamoshi said, I really don't remember very well the insects that I crushed in the past, but I remember perfectly the enemies of my race who in the past tried to make us slaves, but that I ended up facing together with the elite Saiyans. And if I remember well, at that time we managed to destroy the Tuffles and a large part of your race ended up being eliminated. But you were always a problem that no matter how many times I defeated you always came back to destroy my people and my life said Yamoshi in a serious and not arrogant tone as always, as the being in front of him was very strong, strong enough to make Yamoshi act cautiously so as not to be defeated. King Daima said, I always thought that the people of your race would be great servants for my race and my opinion still remains the same. But now Saiyans practically do not exist in our universe of origin, and as such it would be difficult to have them as my personal slaves. But the Saiyans in this universe we are in are still numerous, and from what I can feel there are still Tuffles in this universe, which for me is a very good thing. After all, I can reunite them and restore my old race both in this universe and in ours origin universe. King Daima said while looking at Yamoshi who had to control himself from attacking the Tuffle at that moment. Something that King Daima noticed and smiled as he had noticed that Yamoshi was remembering more things about his past. King Daima said, Look, it was really difficult having to hide inside you after our last battle, but it was worth it since now I'm stronger and I don't exactly need a body to increase my powers. After all I did it absorb some of your Saiyan cells, and maybe I'll even be able to transform into a Super Saiyan or whatever you call these transformations. I was supposed to leave your body some time after I was defeated, but unfortunately you were sealed and I was in inside you so I ended up going along but thanks to you I broke free and you don't know how hard it was for me to try manipulate you by being inside your body and your mind. I'm not the type to play mind games with others but I was surprised by my capabilities or you are simply very easy to be manipulated. King Daima said before starting to laugh at Yamoshi's face, who was confused about what he was saying. Yamoshi thought, now I can understand why since that battle I felt my body heavier. It's because King Daima was inside recovering and strengthening himself with my Saiyan cells. But what does he mean by manipulating me? King Daima never spoke to me mentally or tried to control me using mental powers, something that King Daima cannot do judging by the abilities I know he has. So why did he say all this? Yamoshi asked himself mentally, while looking at King Daima, who knew that the Saiyan was confused just by his facial expression. King Daima spoke. Yamoshi, the great god of the Saiyans, and the one who fought countless times to protect his race from extinction, all this happened in the past before your sealing, but thousands of years later you are freed, and instead of wanting to help the remaining members of your race or try to rebuild it by having children with other humanoid races, you began to face the few members of your race under the pretext of seeing their power level, which is much higher than the power level of the ancient Saiyans of your time, and you eliminated Saiyans who had great potential even even though they didn't belong to their universe of origin. Don't you find it strange that someone so protective of their own race in the past, now in the present, practically eliminated the few survivors of their own race? The Yamoshi of years ago would never do this. He would be more focused on rebuilding his race and not destroying it. But you are not that Yamoshi anymore, or maybe someone implanted these ideas in your head and you like a fool thought they were yours own desires and desires. King Daima said with a mocking tone while looking at Yamoshi who widened his eyes when he heard that. Yamoshi thought, now that King Daima said it, why did I really want to face other Saiyans so much? I like to fight and always have, 
but I never wanted to hurt other Saiyans, and I was always very angry when I saw a member of my race being injured or even being killed, and many times I ended up putting everything aside so I could avenge a companion who had been killed in battle and bring some peace to his family. So why would I want to destroy the rest of the members of my own race? I had a bad feeling this whole time about all of this because it was weird, so in reality, he was responsible for all of this from the beginning. Yamoshi thought, and this thought made the Saiyan grind his teeth with extreme anger at King Daima who smiled when he saw that. King Daima said, Look, I didn't want to do this, but for me to free myself from your body, I needed you to use a very large energy attack, and those eyes of yours were necessary to open a breach, and after you cleaned it, your body using your key was enough for me to free myself from your body, and I was already tired of being trapped inside you. After all, I already have the cells of a Saiyan, and that's all I needed from you, said King Daima, shrugging his shoulders while looking at Yamoshi who was looking at him coldly, which made King Daima take a step back out of pure instinct, and that cheered him up. After all, it had been a while since King Dema had seen that look in Yamoshi's eyes, and Yamoshi's killing intent was quite strong at that moment. Yamoshi said, You manipulated me into destroying my own race by making me want to eliminate them because they are not like the old Saiyans I knew, but they are much stronger than the old Saiyans. And the funniest thing is that that guy Broly reminds me of my old wife. Maybe he's even a descendant of mine and I almost killed him when I faced him, said Yamoshi while clenching his fists and his aura began to rise, which made King King Daima immediately raised his guard. King Daima said, Your wife, right? I remembered now that she had a child with you, but I ended up eliminating her along with her village. But apparently I ended up failing to eliminate her descendants that time. But don't worry because this time I won't make the same mistake. King Daima said while raising his energy as he knew that the battle between the two would begin soon. Yamoshi said, That won't happen because I'm going to end you and this time I'll do it in such a way that you can never return from the world of the dead, you damned tuffle. Yamoshi spoke with great hatred in his voice, which made his murderous intention increase on a large scale. Currently in the 6th universe, more precisely on a planet on the margins of the 6th universe, it was possible to see Yamoshi the first Super Saiyan God and King Daima, the supreme god of Tuffles, two warriors with great power in their hands. Yamoshi and King Daima were facing each other at that moment. Yamoshi, after discovering the real reason he wanted to face and even kill the Saiyans, Yamoshi had a serious and angry look at King Daima who was staring at Yamoshi. The supreme god of Tufalis was staring at the Saiyan with a certain fear while remembering the past and the times he saw that look from Yamoshi. And because of his old memories, King Daima was serious and prepared to start a new fight with Yamoshi. The first fight between the two after thousands of years. King Daima spoke, Do you really want to start a battle, Yamoshi? You know that at the moment you and I are raising our energies and for the other divine beings, we are their targets. And at this moment, we are looking like two big fires in the middle of the darkness and it won't be long before one of them comes after us too. And if that really happens, we will be killed by those divine beings, even more so if it is a god of destruction, after all we are strong, but we can both be permanently destroyed by the powers of destruction of the gods of destruction. And I have practically come back to life now, and I haven't I feel like losing my life so soon said King Daima while facing Yamoshi who was looking at King Daima in a deadly way. Even hearing his words, the Saiyan didn't stop raising his energy. Yamoshi spoke, I don't care if some god of destruction appears here, if they appear and try to stop me from destroying you, then I will destroy the god of destruction and then you, said Yamoshi seriously while looking at Tuffle who sighed as he knew he wouldn't convince Yamoshi not to fight. Because at that moment, the Saiyan wasn't caring about anything other than his destruction. King Daima thought, apparently the only way for me to get out of here will be to fight against him. But this body of mine is still molding and has not yet reached its perfect state, and that is worrying. Thanks to the Saiyan cells mixed with several other cells from different races inside me, I know I can defeat him, but not at the moment. So I need to buy time for my body to readjust. But this can take time, and unfortunately, Unfortunately, I can't speed up the process, not at this moment and not in front of him because I would be killed by Yamoshi if I tried to do that. King Daima thought as he looked seriously at Yamoshi and little by little tried to increase the speed at which his body was adjusting. King Daima said, you really don't care about anything else, do you? Now seeing that look of yours, I can remember when you came after me to get revenge for me destroying all those who were important to you. And that day you were really very angry. And that look of yours is almost as deadly as the one I saw that day. But you're not as angry as you were that day. I just don't know if it's because you're just angry at the fact that I made you want to kill your own kind or it's because you haven't gotten all your memories back yet. 
King Daima said, putting himself in a combat stance as he knew he would have to face Yamoshi at that moment. Yamoshi said, You're only still talking because I'm getting used to my memories. Because if it weren't for that, I would already be stepping on your chest and ripping your head off. But you're not coming at me either because your body is adapting. After all, it was sealed and was inside my body for many years. And as such, your body is adapting to everything including my Seiyen cells that you managed to absorb. And I'm almost sure that your divine energy is adapting to your body again. Yamoshi said after quickly analyzing the situation and his memories about King Daima and how he acted in the past, and that ended up making Tuffle laugh a little. King Daima said, apparently you've already managed to remember me and how I acted in the past, and the speed at which you did this was impressive. After all, you were never the most intelligent Sei Yen I've ever had the displeasure of meeting. You're right, my body is weak after being inside you for so long, but if I remember correctly, I can adapt quickly and it won't take long for me to attack you. King Daima said while smiling evilly at Yamoshi who gave a sideways smile. Yamoshi said, Your arrogance hasn't diminished one bit. On the contrary, it's even greater than the last time I saw you. But I want to remind you of one thing. We fought seven times, and in none of our battles did I emerge as a loser. I almost died a few times, but I was still the one who always won, and this time will be no different. After all, you are not facing a mere Seiyen. You are facing the god of Seiyens, said Yamoshi, before raising his energy and transforming into Super Seiyen God, which surprised King Daima as he wasn't expecting Yamoshi to have already managed to stabilize his mind. King Daima thought, what? Yamoshi shouldn't be able to fight right now. Now, not this fast. This bastard, he's repressing his own memories so they don't get in his way so he can eliminate me. I can't let this damn thing fight right now or I'll be killed by this guy's hands, but I know a way to make Yamoshi unable to fight me. And even though I'm weak at the moment, I can still use some of my skills, King Daima thought to himself, imagining what could happen at that moment if Yamoshi faced him. King Daima said, I wasn't expecting to use this so soon, but apparently I will have to. Heavenly restraint, King Daima shouted, and Yamoshi didn't understand very well, but when he took the first step towards King Daima, several black chains appeared and trapped Yamoshi, preventing him from moving, and even Yamoshi's key ended up being restricted by the black chains. Yamoshi said, you bastard, my energies, my movements are being restricted, you are weak. So how did you manage to use a technique that can restrict divine power? Yamoshi asked in an angry tone, as those chains were not only restricting him, but were also burning his skin, and that made him very angry. King Daima said, did you really think I didn't have some tricks up my sleeve that I could use when I'm weakened? You are someone powerful, Yamoshi, and that is something that I will never be able to deny. But you are at the same time a very stupid and ignorant man. Because unlike you, I not only have raw and destructive power, I have something called intelligence, and I am a great strategist. And for always thinking a few steps ahead of everyone, I develop several different techniques to use in different situations and this is one of them. Celestial restraint is a technique that invokes these dark currents that came from another dimension and these chains serve to contain divine beings and only divine ones. But don't think that you will be able to return to base form while you have some of these currents touching your skin. Until then you will become weaker and weaker until you will inevitably end up dying. Unfortunately I won't be able to keep the chains in this world for long but it will be long enough for me to know what I will do to not be killed today, King Daima said with a big smile on his face, but he soon felt a divine energy approaching the planet. King Daima said, apparently they won't take long to arrive, so I better get out. Yamoshi, I hope you don't die by their hands, because I want to kill you myself, so don't die god of Seiyens, King Daima said, and suddenly a type of portal appeared below him and he jumped and then disappeared from that place, and with that, the chains that held Yamoshi disappeared. Yamoshi said, damn, apparently now I'll have to face these guys, and I won't be able to go after that damn tuffle, Yamoshi said looking at the sky and seeing Champa, the god of destruction from the 6th universe, heading towards the planet along with some allies from the 6th universe. Currently, it was possible to see a small group of individuals floating above the atmosphere of that planet. The members of that small group were composed of Shampa, the god of destruction of the sixth universe, Hit, the most lethal assassin of the sixth universe, and Frost, a false savior who after the end of the tournament of power ended up being revived by the Dragon Balls. Frost focused on becoming more powerful so as not to be humiliated again and was now at a very high power level, just like Hit who had evolved a lot since that time. Frost said, so 
this is the planet that Vado said felt the energy of this Yamoshi guy, along with a second energy that initially seemed very weak, but was gradually getting bigger and was probably as big a threat as Yamoshi himself. Well, this planet is right on the edge of the sixth universe, so it makes sense that he came to this place to hide and regain his strength before doing something else, like wiping out another race or going after the god of destruction of sixth universe, Frost said while looking at the planet below him, and then ended up looking at his two companions and temporary team members. Champa thought, I only called this damned Frost to come along because he's stronger, and I need as many strong people as possible to help me deal with Yamoshi, because if it weren't for that, I would erase Frost's existence here and now before he has the opportunity to betray me and kill me, because I know that this bastard will do it if he gets the chance, because he knows that I don't trust him, and that I will possibly end his life when this situation is resolved, and if I don't do it, I'm almost sure Hit will do it since he has a lot of clients who want Frost's head, and I'm almost on that list too. Thought Shampa, the god of destruction of the sixth universe while looking at Frost, making clear his disgust at having to need the help of a being as disgusting as Frost who knew very well that they didn't like him. Hit said, I have to say that I'm actually surprised by the fact that Yamoshi hid in a place like that, and you're talking that way Frost, because I know you would do the same thing, or even tried to do it in the past when was being pursued by the galactic police because of all his crimes against different races, and don't think we don't know that in recent times you have been hiding very well while training to become more powerful since you saw the power of that being called Frieza, who was very similar to you and you saw his power and wanted an equivalent to his. And that's why you crawled into some hole like a cowardly rat and trained to become strong enough to face the galactic police, and you even destroyed one of the three planets where it was one of the main police bases, Hit said, while looking slightly at Frost who didn't like being insulted like that by Hit. But he couldn't say he was wrong because he wasn't. Frost said, you bastard, you can say what you want, but I did what I did to be able to get stronger in a calm way and without the need to run away from those guys. And I confess that I ended up destroying that planet along with everyone who was there so they could leave me in peace and see that my level of power was already thousands of times higher than their power. And if they were intelligent, they wouldn't come after me, but they are vengeful. So I had to end them all too. And in fact, I know that many, they must have put a price on my head and I know you must have said several contacts to end me, but if you try, I will show you that I'm not the same Frost from the past. Hit, Frost said while raising his aura, showing that it was much greater than during the tournament of power and Hit did the same thing, showing that he was at the same level as Frost or even stronger. Champa said, that's enough you two. We didn't come here to fight each other. We came to defeat the Seiyen who defeated Kaba and killed Khalifla and Kale while they were fused like Kefla. So stop acting like two children and act like the two adults you are. Champa said, attracting the attention of the two warriors who sighed and stopped raising their energy. Frost said, let's get it over with. I have my own things to do, and I don't feel like spending any more time around this guy. Frost said, looking at Champa and then Hit, who sighed and crossed his arms. Champa said, we won't need to go to Yamoshi because he's already coming to us and apparently he doesn't feel like talking to anyone right now, so get ready, Champa said as they felt Yamoshi's divine energy starting to approach them. And soon all three were able to see a type of sphere of flame heading towards them. This sphere was Yamoshi who was in his divine form. The trio upon seeing Yamoshi approaching began to increase their energy, generating an aura around their bodies. Frost was the first to make an attack, advancing towards Yamoshi, something that made Hit and Champa irritated by Frost's impatience, who could screw them over later. Yamoshi thought, there are three individuals, two of the mortals with a self level of power, and the third is the god of destruction of the sixth universe. I'm not in a position to stay in a fight for a long time, so I'm going to finish this fight as quickly as possible and then I'll go back to the seventh universe and prepare to face King Daima because he must be preparing and recovering to come behind me and all the Saiyans in this universe and in the seventh universe as well, as they possibly have the descendants of my former allies. Yamoshi thought as he he flew towards his new opponents, and the first would be Frost who was coming towards him. Frost, when approaching Yamoshi, tried to punch the Seiyen who easily dodged Frost's blow, and then punched Frost in the stomach, who ended up spitting out some saliva upon receiving that blow. And before Frost could react, he ended up receiving a punch to the face, followed by a kick that threw him away. Yamoshi finished by firing a Kiai Sphere towards Frost, but Yamoshi's attack ended up being redirected to Hit who appeared in front of Frost, defending him from that attack. Hit 
took a deep breath and then advanced towards Yamoshi using his time leap in the middle of the way making everything around freeze and when he was close to Yamoshi he aimed a punch at the Saiyan's face. But suddenly Yamoshi broke the time leap of Hit and grabbed his fist surprising the trio to see that the Saiyan knew about Hit's killer technique. Hit saw that his blow was defended. He performed a kick aiming at Yamoshi's face who raised his arm in defense and then the Saiyan caught Hit's leg and began to spin throwing him away. And when he managed to recover he had to use time leap to avoid receiving a punch from Yamoshi who suddenly appeared in front of him and even though Hit dodged it he ended up receiving a cut on the side of his face which made Hit take on a more serious and angry expression. Frost who was far away advanced towards Yamoshi and Frost together with Hit began hand to hand combat against Yamoshi who managed to defend himself from most of the two's blows as both did not have good teamwork so their blows had large gaps between the blows and at the moment when the two opened a large gap Yamoshi performed a key pulse throwing them both away and using his speed he disappeared and reappeared behind Frost landing a powerful kick that made Frost be thrown against the moon that was in the planet and he did the same thing to Hit who received a punch that threw him against the planet that Yamoshi was on a short time ago. Champa seeing the situation ended up advancing towards Yamoshi but suddenly Yamoshi began to shine brightly and disappeared shortly thereafter dodging a blow from Champa's destruction that he had been carrying until that moment to finish Yamoshi with just that attack which stops the bad luck for Champa. He wasn't effective since Yamoshi disappeared and Champa was no longer able to feel his presence. Guys the story is over here but don't worry because there will be more new episodes and it all depends on you so leave your like and subscribe so you don't miss any news about King Daima and Yamoshi. Anyway I say goodbye here until next time.